Hey guys, Down Phoenix here, and I wanted to hop on for a quick gaming vlog about length of video games. Um, this has been a very controversial and hot topic lately because of the Order 1886. So the game just launched today for the PlayStation 4 exclusively, and it is Sony's latest first-party game on the console. And the game was designed basically to help sell PlayStation 4 systems. And it looks like with the latest news, it's not going to do a very good job of that. Um, not to mention the poor review scores it's been getting. It's currently a little under 70 on Metacritic. With some scores as low as, I think I saw a 2 out of 10 on uh, one of the reviews. That's uh, really crazy you know some reviewers have been giving it like eights and whatnot but uh obviously when you have someone giving it a two out of ten you know that's going to really skew things a lot so anyways i do want to point out that this particular game has been the subject of a massive hype train and obviously that was very deliberate um from the very first time the game was revealed back in 2013 with its uh, cinematic uh, teaser that made people think it was something else entirely from what it ended up being. Um, but the game really started getting a lot of flack whenever it got news about apparently a five-hour campaign because there was a YouTube user called Play Me Through, which I think they might be banned from YouTube now. Um, probably would be very wise of Sony to uh, disperse at that, right? But um, they posted a playthrough of the game from start to finish, which took a little more than five hours to complete. And not just that, but there was also a lot of issues like quick time events being very rampant, a lot of cutscenes, not a lot of gameplay. Uh, a couple of hours worth of gameplay within that five hour period. Uh, now, you do have to bear in mind that that was definitely on the short end of things because it seems like most people that are playing the game now are saying that the range, the, the actual range of the game is more in the 7 to 10 hour range. Um, some people have taken as long as 12 hours to complete it. Um, I guess it just ultimately depends on your own pace. Uh, how fast you play through a game, as well as the difficulty setting that you're playing on. You know, those are all going to be factors. If you're playing in a harder difficulty setting, you're probably going to die more often and have to repeat certain parts more often. And that's, you know, just kind of the nature of the game, right? But um, this game has been getting a lot of flack over the length of the game. And that's really strange because look at the game that I'm playing right now. Um... This game is not very long at all. I mean, we are talking like you could beat this game like that. But it is still considered a classic because of the fact that even though it itself is a very short game, uh, the game is highly replayable. You know, both by yourself or with a friend. And... That's something very important to note. I mean, there's, um, you know, co-op would have definitely been a big saving grace for the Order 1886 uh, because of the fact that, you know, being able to share your experience with friends means you'll want to play through it again. Uh, most likely, I mean, that's assuming you enjoy the game, of course. You know, I guess a similar game to the Order 1886's uh, the Gears of War series. All of them have had a multiplayer component of some type. Co-op, uh, competitive, and you know, so on. And, uh, you know, even though the, the Gears games themselves are fairly short, you know, probably within the same range of time as the Order 1886 campaign is, it offered the player more to do. And that's something that... Uh, you know, that's something that a short game needs to keep in mind. Is that if you're making your game to be able to play through it in a day, you need to be able to offer the player some kind of incentive to go back to the game. 
Uh, you could have the shortest game in the world if you give people reasons to come back to it. Now, multiplayer seems like the easy answer to it, but it's not necessarily needed. Uh, I want to share an example uh, of my brother. Uh, whenever he got an Xbox 360, um, I actually bought him a copy of uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I know, I know, shoot me down, right? Because, I mean, Call of Duty apparently is a trashy series now. But this was back when, uh, back in 2007 or whatever, when Modern Warfare was praised for being such an excellent game and all that good stuff. You know, I mean, the, the times are different, right? Uh, but um, he didn't have online for like several months after he got the Xbox 360. You know, he, he, he was playing mainly single player. And the thing is, that game gave you a lot of reasons to go back to single player. Um, for instance, you had the different difficulty settings, of course. But you also had different modes like the arcade mode, which allow you to build up like a high score. And, uh, you know, of course, you had, like, the achievement hunting and whatnot. And then, of course, you had the multiplayer. You had online as well as local multiplayer. The game had a lot to offer for $60. Even though its campaign was fairly short, you can probably beat that game in about five to six hours easily. Uh, you know, that and that's, you know, maybe even shorter. You know, if you, get, if you go on easy with, like, practically no deaths, you might be able to do it in about four hours. Uh, but it gave you reasons to come back to the game. And that's something that developers that are making short single player type games need to realize is you have to give the player some kind of incentive to return to the game on top of, you know, obviously making a good game. Now the order 1886 could be like the greatest game ever. It's obviously not. If you look at the opinions that people have out had out there but there might be like a few people out there to think it's like the greatest thing since sliced bread but are they going to have much of a reason to come back to it you know i mean even if it was a great game there's really not a lot of reason to come back to it because they didn't really design the game in that manner we have to realize you know that uh, when you're buying a video game versus, say, buying a movie, you know, you're usually paying, paying about $20 for a brand new movie. And that's only going to be a couple of hours, right? But you're going to have a lot of extras typically when you're buying a movie, like uh, the commentary tracks, uh, behind the scenes stuff, deleted scenes, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. So a two hour movie can easily stretch up to 10 hours. Um, with that extra content. Plus, if it's a really good movie, you're probably going to watch it again and again. You're probably going to watch it several times um, over the course of the years. And it's so that it's okay for a game to be only five or six hours long, as long as it has that kind of extra content uh, to enjoy, on top of being a good game, of course. You know, I mean, you obviously have games like uh, Skyrim, which can easily stretch over 100 hours. And, you know, I love Skyrim. If you look at my Steam playlist, you know, you see that I've played it for over 150 hours. But I can definitely guarantee that a good chunk of that time was playing the game through, like, slow areas. You know, there wasn't a lot going on in the game. You know, you had a lot of exploration and things like that. You know, it's, it was that kind of game. You know, you had a big, huge map. And you're going to have a lot of moments where there's not a lot of action in the game. So, obviously, when you're designing a game in that manner, it's quite easy to stretch it out over that time. You know, it's given that the game designers designed it that way. They designed it to be a huge game that the players can explore every nook and cranny and do every single little thing. And that's the kind of experience it is but that doesn't mean that that's the only kind of game that's worth sixty dollars you know um like i said you know a really short game can easily be worth sixty dollars you know one of the one of my favorite games of last year was infamous second son that's not exactly a very long game you could probably beat it in i don't know 10 to 15 hours but it did give you reasons to come back 
because for one you had the um different morality system so you can do the good side and then the evil side in a subsequent playthrough um so that pretty much doubles the uh, length of the gameplay even though a lot of stuff will be the same you know but at the same time you get different powers and you know sequence of events will happen a little bit differently uh you know whether you're playing as the good or the bad side you know even the dialogue will change a little bit and you know just little things like that and on top of that of course you know if the game has you know that game also had some side activities that you could do and that adds a little bit of time too because you can probably spend a few hours just goofing around in that game you know doing the various side activities and whatnot and so you know it's not it, it didn't have any kind of like multiplayer component or anything of that nature so that's fine you know and and then of course you know, you get to the DLC version of the first light, you know, it was even shorter. Obviously, it was cheaper, too. But it had a lot of the different challenge modes and things like that to kind of extend uh, the gameplay that people have. You know, I mean, game developers need to realize that, you know, people have strict budgets. And if they want their games to sell at full price instead of people waiting on price drops and whatnot, they need to give some justification to that price. Um, if you're making a short single player only experience, you need to give players reasons to revisit that game. Um, you know, other than the storyline, you know, I mean, we have to realize that story in video games has came a long way. But sometimes people just want to play and we need to give them ways to keep on playing. So... That's my thoughts on this here. You know, I really don't think it's a problem that games are that short. I think it's a problem if there's no reasons to revisit those games. So, uh, let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the comments below. Uh, till then, down Phoenix out. Every test chamber is equipped with an emancipation grill and its exit. Congratulations.